Well, thanks to all of you that tweeted your questions for this Twitter No Boundaries Q&A video. I asked for any questions wrestling, non-wrestling related. Facebook followers, your video is coming up soon. I didn't forget about you, believe me. Thanks to you guys for your questions as well. Let's go ahead and get started. At the Metal Smart Ask, out of WWE's many problems, which do you think is the biggest and most restraining problem that's preventing them from improving? Very simple, uh, their decision in 1999 to become a publicly traded company. That was about ego. That was about trying to establish validity, even though based off of the television ratings you had, and the mainstream attention you were garnering at the time, you already had that credibility and acceptance, even if people didn't want to admit it. 20 years later, people are still talking about uh, the people's eyebrow, and they're talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin, and they're talking about crotch chops and suck it and everything else. You had it. And what happened was, by going public, it really, I feel like, hamstrung them in a lot of the things that they did as a wrestling or sports entertainment company. Most notably... Uh, it's all about that next fiscal quarter and trying to make sure that the sheets financially look as good as possible. You can't have the patience to do what you want to do, even if it doesn't work out at first. Again, because you have shareholders to answer to, you have a board of directors to answer to, you have all of this to answer to. You're expanding yourself way too wide way too thin you're spread out because you're trying to generate additional sources of revenue in part to be able to pay out uh, your dividends to the shareholders. And you ultimately are running a stock, not a wrestling company. So if there's one decision out of all that has impacted the company the most negatively for almost two decades now, it is their decision in 99 to have that IPO and become a publicly traded company. At Grime Sean asked, what did you think of the way Conan responded to your tweet? I'm not surprised. It's typical. Again, if any wrestler ever tells you that wrestling fans are babies, that they're the crybabies, that they're the pussies, that they're the marks, time after time after time, that has proven to just be complete and total bullshit. And of course, instead of understanding the criticism, was not like an attempt to totally bury, but point out something I thought was valid. And if you watch the Impact Wrestling product right now, you can see what I'm talking about. Everything always funnels back to Conan. And what he's doing is not spreading out to the others. And I still don't know much about the tag team champions. That is a problem. And if he doesn't like that I said that, he can fuck right off and eat shit. If he thinks that everything is hunky-dory, the viewership numbers over the past couple weeks indicate ding-dong, dumb dick, you're fucking wrong. And as far as the whole thing about name-calling, that figures. Again, I would think somebody who was once a soldier, that was once a massive record uh, money-drawing guy in Mexico, that got so hopped up and addicted on painkillers that he blew out his own kidneys to where he had to get a kidney donor and get a kidney transplant would have a better perspective on life and not be so quick to sit there and do all this bullshit looking like you're on fucking death's door talking shit to me like that give me a fucking break i didn't sit there and bring that shit up at first but if you want to play let's play bitch no it's just and i've even said i even i even had credited him that at least he responded unlike a lot of other people in let's say wwe that just block your ass I and mean, I didn't start insulting him, name-calling him. I just gave valid criticism. If you can't ha handle criticism, get the fuck out the wrestling business. Get the fuck out of the internet, especially. I get criticized all the time. If I couldn't handle it, then I need to go the fuck away. If I can't handle the criticism, the criticism not the problem. I'm the problem. That's all I'm saying. Lord Eaton Beaver. <laughs> Who has more interesting and compelling characters and stories, WWE and Pornhub? You already know the answer to that one, and it revolves around the Spank Bank. And great job being Lord Eaton Beaver asking me a question comparing WWE and Pornhub. I don't think there's any question it's Pornhub. At Harding Everett, if Triple H is God, then who in WWE is the devil? I think at this point in time, you have to say Vince McMahon. Married men might say Stephanie, to which you are also probably correct. But that might be more of a demon thing than, let's say, a devil thing. DJ Spoils Bag. What company or retailers do you see not being around in five years? Um, two that I can think of off the top of my head, even though they're under the same organization are Sears and Kmart. Um, they're not going to be around in five years. I just can't see them lasting. Uh, other companies that I think are in trouble, um, a lot of big box retailers frankly are. I also think of a company like Best Buy. I don't think they're having the best days. Um, they've had some issues. Um, I look at somebody else. Who else would I say? Subway. 
Now, it doesn't mean in five years the the, fran- the whole company will completely go under, but they're not a well-run company right now. Their marketing, their advertising, their promotion is atrocious. Their business concepts and ideas are stupid, just flat out stupid. Like you look at them and say, who the fuck thought this was a good idea? Who in the meeting room circle jerk to themselves thinking that this was going to help move product? So in five years, you could see this potentially being a brand that is significantly negatively impacted and having a lot of store closings where right now, probably part of what helps the franchise um, model for Subway is they have so many uh, units, so many stores. But that could also potentially be a detriment because you're spread too thin. Um, So they're another one that I watch and see in five years just exactly where they're actually at. At SA Sports Blog asks, with more evidence coming out on CTE, will it eventually result in the death of football as time goes on? I don't think so. It's too ingrained in the culture of this country to completely go away. Uh, In 10, 20 years, we could see a small reduction in the level of talent in the game because some parents just won't allow their kids to play. Um, You could also see in 10, 20 years when kids do get up to that level of college and then the NFL, they maybe were held out until middle school or high school, so therefore they're not as far along in their careers, couldn't negatively impact the product long term. But again, I come back to this whole thing. I don't feel sorry for these retired NFL players. You didn't need any science or any research to sit there and tell you about the potential risk and negative consequences and repercussions that came along with playing football. You just didn't. It's like working in the coal mine for 30 years. You think breathing in all that black dust is a good thing for you. Call it black lung for a reason. You think when you take a product like cigarettes or black and miles like I smoke, doesn't take a rocket science. I don't need a Surgeon General's warning to tell me that this is potentially a dangerous product. Soda pop, same thing. Too much sugar, same thing. But just so many of these things are common sense that they're not good for you. You don't need somebody to tell you that. And as a result, to pretend all of a sudden, honestly, that this is earth-shattering news is just complete sensationalistic media bullshit. And that's exactly what it is. It, that's all it is. So, no, I don't think it's going to lead to the death of football. Um, but I do think there are some potential problems on the horizon long term. Dexter C73 asks, which team do you think will sign Kaepernick? Well, now that the Dolphins signed Jay Cutler, they gave him $10 million a year <laughs> to be mediocre. Um, I fucking don't think anybody is. I, I just don't see it at this point. <sighs> wow. Yeah, I can't see him being signed. Uh, Dema Champ is here. How do you think the world will end? And how long do you think we have left? If I had to say the world ending from our standpoint, it'd probably be of our own doing, um, pumping out so many greenhouse gases over the years to the point where we deplete the ozone layer to a level to where we get some type of <laughs> some radiation burst from the sun, some type of gamma rays or shit, and we all get fried. Doesn't mean technically the planet would end, we just, as a people, as a species, might end. Um, Otherwise, if that, there might be some great plague that would wipe us out. Um, Could be any a number of things. Nuclear holocaust is always a possibility. Uh, How long do I think we have? I think we're good through my lifetime, probably. And probably going forward. Because part of the thing you have to be careful of is all the um, people that always talk about doom and gloom and art and getting and everything else. I'll save that for the scam artists that use religion to make their fortunes. That's all I'm saying. Oh, plant your seeds. Praise the Lord. I need that corporate jet in order to spread God's love everywhere. And honestly, if you donate to people like that, you deserve exactly what the hell happens. You deserve to be taken advantage of and get ripped the fuck off because you're a moron, period. At Andrew Harrington 4, do you see Baron Corbin cashing in at SummerSlam? I think it's very likely. I would prefer with Baron Corbin that he didn't just cash in the traditional way. I would rather have him the night after SummerSlam come out and say, hey, Shinsuke, I'm going to let you know that I'm getting a title shot at whatever the next pay-per-view is after SummerSlam. I can't remember what it is for the SmackDown brand. Give it weeks where you hype it up, you pump it up, you promote it, and and let him cash in that way because that would be so counterculture to what they typically do where a guy just comes out by surprise. I think it would 
build up the dude as a serious threat. He didn't need the chicken shit tactics in order to get the belt. Horror Movie Review... They're not doing that, though, obviously. Horror Movie Review 73. Why does WWE bother being a worldwide company when they don't even treat their non-white talents properly? Now, it's kind of a here or there thing. They treat the Samoans typically pretty well. Even though sometimes they will give them stereotypical kind of prejudicial gimmicks, they've treated plenty of their Hispanic, Latin, Mexican wrestlers pretty well too. Asian, black, eh, fuck you, not so much. Um, with that said, they know that as their domestic audience continues to dwindle, they have to find new fan bases, new revenue streams, so that's why they bother. That's simple. At Mid Carter J, anyone you hate at the same level as Dino Bravo and the founder, uh, the Memphis Mid Card piece of crap. From a wrestling standpoint, good question. Good question. I mean, the Dino Bravo thing is kind of a shtick and a gimmick. I mean, he always sucked. I never liked him. But I wouldn't say I have, like, a deep fundamental hatred of him. I just wish he would have sold me some cigarettes before he got killed. No. Um, the Memphis Midcard piece of crap, he's high up on the list, but I don't know that he would be number one. Uh, from a wrestling standpoint, I would say guys like Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn might be higher up on the hate list. Michael P.S. Hayes. Might be higher up on the hate list. Dixie Carter would be higher up on the hate list. So you know, those two aren't the top two in terms of the wrestling people that I would hate the most. That's for sure. Uh, Ahmed L.W. asks, Tony Atlas likes it when women walk on his face. Do you have any comments? Yes, I like it when black women sit on my face. Next question. Regular cool dude asked, any advice on how someone can quit smoking? Honestly, I've done it before, was successful, and then ultimately failed. Um, you just have to choose to want to do it. Like, I will say this. When it comes to the human psyche, the human spirit, the human mind, the human soul, if you want to quit smoking, you can quit smoking. Now, give me any excuses about the products and the chemicals and the nicotine and all that. If you want to quit bad enough and you want to fight hard enough, you will do it and you will do it relatively quickly. Don't bother buying all the freaking products. Don't sit there and do this, do all that. Make up your mind that your number one goal of the program is to quit smoking and then go about, about weaning yourself off and then just cutting yourself off at some point and stop doing it. Hopefully I can get there soon. But that, that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, Kyle Garner 92 for paying off debt like student loans. Do you recommend the snowball method or the avalanche method? For those of you that aren't 100 percent familiar with what uh, Kyle Garner is asking here, the snowball method, which is uh, being trumpeted by financial people such as Dave Ramsey, is to if you have a series of debts, pay off the smallest balance one first and then go next smallest, next smallest, next smallest, next smallest, all the way up until you pay it all off. Which the positive of that primarily is, is you can see progress as you go and you can start to slowly pay debt off. And you can clear some of those off of your credit report in terms of them reflecting as derogatory accounts, collections, what have you. The avalanche method is where you start off at the top and you focus the vast majority of your energies, you pay the minimum on everything else. Whereas with the snowball, you pay off the smallest minimum everything else on up the ladder. Avalanche is reverse. You mash and smash the top and watch it trickle down to the bottom. Most of your money goes here, minimums everywhere else. Challenge with the avalanche method is for human nature. You've already kind of got yourself into a situation where you're buried ass over tea kettle in debt. Um, so to sit there and see that, hey, I've got $20,000 in this student loan, and then a year later, I've still got $16,000 of this student loan, and these balances also haven't gone down either. So it can be tough to discipline yourself, and if you're the type of person that likes that instant gratification of knowing you've paid off one at a time, the snowball method can be effective. So I don't totally bash Dave Ramsey for endorsing it. The fatal flaw with the snowball method is especially if you have balances that are accumulating interest as they go along, which 
most will when you talk about revolving debt such as credit cards, um, personal loans, student loans, car loans, those type of things. That interest keeps building. And the problem is paying off the very lowest one is going to have the least amount of interest accumulate. So meaning you're getting a minimum amount of financial savings out of it, whereas the interest is continuing to accumulate here and then is being calculated each month again off of an ever increasing average daily balance and factoring in that annual percentage rate. When you put in the daily periodic financial, what the fuck do I know? I just work for a bank and I work on these type of calculations all the freaking time working in regulatory adherence. Well, again, what would I know? What I know is, is that the avalanche method long term is going to save you a shit ton of money in terms of interest. So if you're the type of person that likes to discipline yourself or has trouble disciplining yourself, I should say, snowball method is effective, but no long term, you are paying more money. No question. The math just supports that. The avalanche method can be harder at first, but long term, you're going to save yourself a ton of money. If you want to save more money in paying off your debt, then that's the method to go. Unless you just do what I do, is wait for them to go to collections over the years and uh, just write out validation of debt letters. <laughs> and you watch them bitches fall off your bureaus. And the reason that happens is because a lot of times when these debts get sold from one party to another... A lot of those corroborating records when you had signed up for the account, original de terms and disclosures, um, anything talking about previous correspondence, previous payment history, a lot of that isn't carried over because the debt buyers, the collection agencies, are buying this debt for pennies on the dollar. So they know that they're not going to be able to collect on a lot of it, but if they can collect on a couple of them, they're making their money back several times over. So to me... What I would advise is when it comes to paying off your debt, especially if it is in a uh, charged off state, if it is in a collection agency state, sometimes the worst thing you could do, and this is the stupidity of the system, is trying to do the right thing and paying off your debts could really fuck you. Because let's say you have a $2,000 credit card debt that has been in collection for f six years. Well, typically it will only report on your bureaus for seven to seven and a half years after date of de first delinquency. So you've only got a year and a half left, and that shit's no longer going to um, report on your bureaus. Not to mention the fact that in certain states, depending on where you are, that six-year time frame, um, that debt might not even be in the statute of limitations anymore, meaning that that company cannot garnish your wages. They cannot file judgment against you in a court unless you re-age the debt by making a payment on it. So if you take that $2,000 debt that's been sitting there for six years and all of a sudden you make a couple of payments on it and then you can't pay on it, guess what? The statute of limitations on that bitch started all the fuck over again. Now that crap could sit there for another seven to seven and a half years and now you've just created a problem for yourself. And that happens far too often and it's sad. Validate that debt. There's nothing wrong with asking, can you prove that I owe this debt? Can you prove that, more importantly, that I owe you the money for this debt? And typically, what I will always recommend is when you go looking for validation of debt letter templates on the internet, uh, make sure it's a good one. And then what you do is you make sure you send it certified mail, return receipt requested, so that way you've got val validation yourself, verification yourself of when it was received. And then that countdown clock begins if they don't respond back within the time frame that you stated on the letter, assuming you haven't previously corresponded with the collection agency, if they can't prove that they can collect on the debt, they have to stop reporting it and they can't collect on it until again they can prove it. So my thought is go the validation of debt letter first if we're talking about charged off accounts that are in collections. Get as many of them off there as you fucking can. You'd be surprised at the turnaround and success rate of that. And I will tell you this, in my history, since I've been 18 years old, I've had to do this far too many times because shit happens and so on and so forth. But I can tell you, I have never had a debt be validated by a collection agency. Now, it might get ultimately just sold off to another collection agency and I go through the process again, but ultimately never had a collection agency validate my debt. So just keep that in mind. That's probably the approach to go if you got some charged off 
um, collection agency debt first, then try to settle, then try to do the avalanche method. And especially if it's accounts that are still open, they're just delinquent. Um, obviously, you're going to have to make the minimum payments in order to stay current, keep the account open. But at that point in time, I would prefer Snowball because even though there's not that quite same instant gratification long term, you're saving yourself a ton of money. So listen to Dave Ramsey if you need that cheap instant gratification. Um, but if you don't want to spend twice as much as you should, then don't listen to that fucking numbskull is what I'm saying. Spanky Toodles, thoughts on the Columbine shooting? I happened my senior year, what was it, April 20th or 21st, 1999, whatever the hell day it was. I remember soon after, there was a lot of trepidation in my school about was something like that going to happen there. And then there was uh, some rumor that somebody had created his own list in the last day of school. They were going to sit there and come and shoot the place up. And this was on the heels of several other school shootings throughout the mid and late 90s. So I remember that, and of course, all these years later, we still haven't done an effective enough job of securing our schools. Whether you think that's teachers with guns or more police or metal detectors across the board, our school security suck, period. And we all know they do. Um, and that's a tragedy. It's these type of things happen, and we don't do anything about them. Ampex 199 Chase. Do you think the Redskins have a chance at the playoffs? They could. Um, problem is, is they got to get past probably either the Giants or the Cowboys in that division, which could potentially be a tall task. Um, in terms of wild cards, you probably will have a wild card come out of the NFC East, and you might have a team that's in the mix for the wild card in either the NFC West or the NFC South. So it's possible. Um, but man, the matzo ball of not having Kirk Cousins sign long term. I wonder if that's really going to catch up the organization this year. Uh, at RM Macy one, any advice on how to start a YouTube channel? Uh, figure out what you want to talk about. See some of the things that people do well in the area that you're going to talk about, uh, and try and incorporate some new and different things in there. Make sure you have a good social media strategy. Network as much as you possibly can. It's just like in the business world, networking is everything. Oftentimes, it's not what you do. It's who you know, and sometimes it's who you screw. Um, but that's it. Be consistent in your uploading, something I failed with at times. Uh, stuff like that. Want any more advice? Reach out to me on Twitter. I'm no genius by any stretch of the imagination, but hey, I have at least a little bit of an audience. Uh, MFA 2, when Sid gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, will you go? Hell fucking yes, and I hope it's next year because I still plan on going to WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. Please, WWE, make it so. ENC 98, how long do you see the second brand split continuing? Uh, until Vince just one day changes his mind. So that could be six months um, after, you know, what, it'd be eight months, and maybe after WrestleMania. could last another year. It could last another two years. It could be a continuous ever-going thing because they needed to help... Um, mask some of the problems they have in terms of the profit margin so i don't know because i mean the first brand split lasted for what a decade so this one could last for years don't anticipate going away anytime soon era of reality if you could get a stink face from any female wrestler past or present who would it be uh early 2000s trish period oh yes to boldly go where Lillian Garcia had gone before. MacDog714, what is your best memory of your old cat, Precious? Um, man. So many great memories over the years with him. Um, I still remember, I still think the favorite story, though, is how I got him. I was 18 years old, and there's this cat meowing outside i look downstairs and there he is so i go in and feed him go down and feed him bring him inside my mom was over visiting and she's like you better not do that your landlord didn't think you have a cat and yeah, yeah, yeah. god bless bonnie sue but i wanted to smack the hell out of that bitch that day i'll put it that way so of course listening to her because i was fucking stupid i put him back outside and then didn't see him for like a week and week and a half. And every day, I made my mom feel guilty as hell about it. And I told her, you better pray to God I don't find him dead in the alley or the street or somewhere else. 
because I'm going to hold you forever responsible. Because I just knew and just felt it that this was meant to be. Like this was, this was supposed to happen. And I knew it. And it was funny. I just happened for whatever reason to randomly look out the window one day. It was like a Friday night, I think it was. And just before it was getting dark. And I look outside and I turn my head again for whatever reason. Looking out a bathroom window, I usually didn't look out the bathroom window because that's kind of weird, but I did in this particular case. And here he is coming down the alley and walking up to the front door. Man, I bolted. <laughs> I almost forgot to put my pants up. <laughs> and went running downstairs. <laughs> For those of you asking if I wiped, yes, I technically wiped, okay? <laughs> I went downstairs and got him. And I had the son of a gun for almost 14 years. It was a hell of a story of how he came to be in my life. So many other great memories of him. When I used to sit there and get chicken from Popeye's or something. And God, that dude was vicious when it came to his fried chicken. I mean, vicious. Straight vicious. Oh, yeah. No, no question. All the times I sit there and turn around and be like, where are Precious and Feisty at? And there he is in the other room plowing the piss out of her. He was a honey fucker. <laughs> he was good peeps, though, man. He was good peeps. Um, <laughs> I, miss, I miss him. It's been four years now. A little over four years now. Where does that time go, you know? Same thing with Smokey. They passed away less than half a year apart. Mm, 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 mm. And Feisty, too. She passed away seven months before Precious. It was like literally all three of them in a year's time. That sucked. Lots of good memories, though. Go adopt the pet or, or cat or dog if you feel like you have a void in your life. So I promise you, it's worth it. It's worth it. Uh, Clint the Boxer closes us out and says, Do you think Macho Man bangs Stephanie? I think this has been addressed and talked about over the years. I have no reason to believe that he didn't. Because otherwise, there would have been no reason for Vince to have blackballed him for so long from the WWE. I'm sorry. Because Hogan cut tail and run, Nash and Hall did it, so many of these other guys did it. What was it that made Macho Man's situation so different? And don't give me the Slim Jim sponsorship. It was more so <laughs> the Macho Slim inside the Billion Dollar Princess. Oh yeah, dig it, freak out. Cup of coffee in the big time. Cream of the crop. Oh, yeah, he banged the shit out of her. I'm sure he did, and I'm sure it was repeated. Whether she was of age or not, different story. But anyways, thanks again to all of you guys for your questions. I know this ran a bit long, but this was good. Hope you guys got something out of the, the credit segment. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll do another Q&A soon. Next up will be the Facebook Q&A. Uh, so stay tuned for that.